podcast with friends i'm joined as always with my friends binary gary over here no over there uh (laughs) who is a professional super taster and allison allison plus on the internet and she is a cat herder (laughs) whoa (laughs) Herding those cats. Herder and wrangler. Yeah. Do you get um, chaps on a rope with that position? Yeah. There's a lasso. There's everything. I only I only partake in jobs that I get us. There's a like a job specific hat. <laughs> wow. That would make for a very interesting interview process. What <laughs> questions do you have for us? What Why do you have a hat? The position. <laughs> I need a specific hat for this job. I don't know what the developer <laughs> hat looks like. I'm not wearing it currently, um, but. Oh, that's, that's a great bit. What would a developer hat look like? A developer Pink sombrero. <laughs> Pink sombrero yeah. or a toilet plunger. It's, <laughs> big brim. it just depends on the day of the week, you know? <laughs> that's true. It's also true. So, some days it wouldn't be a hat at all. It would be just like a monk style, like buzz in the middle of your head. So you're bald with the hair coming down. I, I, I have that problem 24 7 gary <laughs> yeah true some days it would be more celebratory with like perhaps like a little confettis <laughs> on launch day you would need two hats like <laughs> goes well or it doesn't go well it's just like a, a hat with a really sad trombone <laughs> <laughs> so last week uh it was episode one, 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 one. That means this week is episode 100,000. 100, we did it. We're done. So, so <laughs> it's binary, which means it has, that's, so two, four, eight, 16, wait. I was doing this with my kids, yeah. I was doing this with my kids. Oh, uh, one, two, four, eight, 16. This is episode 32. Yeah. Wow. Oh. That's amazing. I'm very impressed. It is, it is amazing. I'm also amazed at how much I've learned in the show <laughs> bumping into these topics. In the real world? I mean, as much of the real world as I engage in, but yeah. Yeah. On Slack. <laughs> no, same. Same. The real world. Slack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not our Slack. Other Slacks. <laughs> that counts as the real world. It does. Oh, totally. It it's not to. our Slack. If it's everyone else's Slack, then yeah, it's the real world. I had to, um, I, I had a, a check I was trying to deposit from my phone this morning and it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't do it. Oh man, I have to go find an ATM to deposit this in. Like where, I had to, I had to, I had to Google it. Like I, so I, I trekked out of the house this morning to find an ATM. I, I probably drove nigh two miles <laughs> First and back. Times. Yeah. I'm, so your trust level is such that you're like you're on board with scanning and sending and e. Oh yeah. Positive. Yeah. 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 I, 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 totally, I mobile deposit everything. Yeah. In the past, I've totally um, taken. Um, someone's like, "Hey, I need to send you a check." I'm just like, write the check and send me a photo of it, and I'll pull up the photo on my computer screen and take a photo with my phone and deposit that way. It's the same thing. I don't need the physical paper. Like, you know. If you can't ACH it to me, just send me a photo and I'll take a photo of the photo and it works just fine. Hmm. Yeah, it's too bad you can't like upload a photo. I've wanted to upload a photo before, but I won't, but you have to actually take the photo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't do Apple Pay though, like the tap to check out thing. I haven't figured that out. And when I, the one time or the last time I did it because I did it at the Apple store because you figure you're at the Apple store, do the Apple, I mean, when, when in Rome. <laughs> So the last time I did it in that, at the Apple store, it took like literally five minutes. I could have, in the time it took for it to connect and actually do the, the transaction, I could have taken my wallet out of my pocket, handed over a card, 
and then he would have inserted it into his little thingy and it would have completed the transaction before Apple Pay kicked in. I've, I, I love Apple Pay, especially on the wrist. Um, and there are only a handful of places I've used where it doesn't work. Um, the Apple Store being one. <laughs> I blame, I, I blame, well, okay, that's good to know because I usually blame my own incompetence. I've also seen, I also went to Costco. Costco doesn't have Apple Pay or any sort of like tap to pay thing set up at all. So yeah. um, I saw these two millennials, one guy with his phone out, they're checking out at Costco and one guy's like, <laughs> trying to make Apple Pay work, but it wasn't, and then he's like, you don't have Apple Pay? Hashtag millennial problems. That's like, no, Costco is old school. They don't even take credit cards. Look at what they're selling. They're selling like flats and crates of things. It's not the environment that you'd be like, ooh, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> so futuristic. <laughs> not until they're hovering all those crates of things. They, they, <laughs> they hemmed and hawed so, and, and, and drag their feet on installing chip readers for like the longest time because, because they were afraid that the chip readers were going to be slow because they were at first, right? When they first yeah. uh, did chip readers, the chip readers were slower in, in processing the transaction and they pro go through so many transactions, they were afraid of sales uh, being affected. So they didn't do it. They didn't install the chip readers and you had to do a swipe. You know, you make sales faster. Time. Like package items in like a human movable box. I feel like at Costco, like it would be faster if I could lift the items I'm purchasing <laughs> without a forklift, as opposed to oh, man. Most of the buy, things like, I get, at, most of the things I get at Costco, I can physically lift, Gary. I, I mean, maybe it's Mo me. I don't know. I, most. And I will say, like, I'm not a, a Costco shopper. Our bulk store is BJ's. Um, uh, excuse me. It's called BJ's. It's a it's a warehouse store. It's it's Costco, but a a knockoff of Costco. <laughs> um, without the uh, without the like concern for employees. So it's it's like crappy Costco. It's a Walmart of Costco's. I've got some follow up questions, but I'm just gonna keep them. I thought the Walmart of Costco is Sam's Club. Oh, because Sam's Club is actually owned by. Um. Yeah. Costco, Shit. Uh, Walmart. That's a. <laughs> That's a really good point. Okay. Well, <laughs> so it's the, I don't know, if the family dollar of bulk store, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's better. It might be. I That's mean, it's, horrible. It, it feels pretty sketch, but, uh, you know, the gas is a dime a gallon cheaper, and um, I, they just have, like, do you need a print cartridge? Great. Here's 27. Like, ah. <laughs> I my printer orders printer cartridges for me now. What? Yeah, I gosh, I just watched this morning episode seven of X Files season eleven. If you haven't seen it, it's um, like AI. They start out in a sushi restaurant, like with no staff. It's all like a computerized place, and um, and uh, Mulder is a tip, and then like the self driving car that takes Scully home like freaks out, and then. <laughs> Like there's this like whole Amazon component, like, you know, demanding you review the products you've purchased. I mean, it's, it, there's not all the X-Files I watch where I'm like, oh damn, that was scary. Like a lot of times it's entertaining. This one, I was, I was like, I was legitimately frightened by, and the only saving grace is that I know how software is made. So it's totally fictional. That's it. <laughs> like, fuck, we're so close to this mess. I'm sorry. We've lost our G rating today. <laughs> it only happened 10 minutes in. Yeah, no, my printer, my printer. Can you believe is. that? I My printer bad. orders uh, printer cartridges. It when it detects that the the car the ink is low, it'll. Um, I, I mean, I authorize it obviously, like I because it has to pay, right? <laughs> so like I know that it's doing it. So like you you go you fill out a form. It's already connected to the internet. You can already like access and see print levels and whatever remotely. Um, and so yeah, I just and and yeah, I just put in like I imagine a world where one more like, step to basically add in like a uh, credit card number or whatever, and then we're gonna be a podcast on. It. And we're going to hear the doorbell ring and Chris is going to go and come back with his print cartridge. And then like the next week we're going to go and Chris is going to come back with like an armful of print cartridges and like cue like four episodes beyond that. And like a truck <laughs> is backing up, dumping and burying Chris alive in print cartridges because <laughs> HP demands you purchase their cartridges. It's not HP. <sighs> well, thank God for that. Yeah. If it was HP, then I would believe that story. <laughs> every, every printer company is less evil than HP. Yes. That's, that's one of the, the edicts I live my life by. One of the reasons why I, I exclusively get brother uh, printers is because it's not HP. 
<laughs> they also sound friendly, don't they? Yeah, don't they? I trust this printer. Also, this podcast wanna... episode brought to you. <laughs> brought to you by brother. Not by H. Uh, yeah, by not HP. By anyone uh, but HP. <laughs> so this is a show, if you're, if you're new to the show, and if you are, you're 32 episodes late, um, uh, where we have a topic and we talk about the topic, and then at the end of the show, we apparently play a quiz show, because uh, that's how we roll now. We don't take questions anymore, we just play quiz shows. Not enough of them. <laughs> Usually it's a G-rated show. I'm really riled up this morning, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, pol- no apologies it's, it's necessary. It's the... It's the artificial intelligence taking over the world that that riles everyone up. Now I'm wondering, well, no, that's not, I was, I was going to say, now I'm wondering, like, how is this episode going to be parsed by what computers? But we tried that with Amazon and got back some crazy dialogue that never happened, so. Yeah, that's true. We were talking about, talking about Jews and who <laughs> knows what's going on. No. It's really anti-Semitic. <laughs> Do Somehow the robots thought we were assholes. I don't know how they would have figured that out. No, that part they got right, incidentally. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself. <laughs> the robots don't know me at all. <laughs> That's true. You were off the grid on the robot board. Yeah, I actually had a conversation yesterday about um, with a robot. No, about robots. About about uh, about um, face identification services uh, provided by Amazon versus the same services provided by Google, and and um, that Google's are like a whole lot better. Obvi- for obvious reasons, right? Like Amazon's got computing power, but they don't have the history of going through and indexing everything you know into man. Every movement. And Street View. Do you remember when when Google first started rolling around vehicles, and it was like, this is crazy. Like, how are they ever going to justify this cost? Like back in the, I don't know. I I mean, what year would that have been? That would have been in the. I don't the, know, the but late two thousands. But I was and also it like so, a crazy expense. Right. So I it was uh, it was a fellow uh, developer at, at Human Made, and we were talking. He was telling me about because um, he was he was checking out Google Cloud, and Google Cloud has these like tutorials where it's you know you set up a like a Kubernetes box or whatever, and you connect to their services and whatever, and and it they give you a three hundred dollar credit to use their services while you're going through the the tutorial the the training program, right? And so he started it and didn't finish it, and so like a couple months later he gets a bill for sixty bucks for this box that he built during this the training yeah. course that is still there, and now he has to pay for it because and that's how that's like that's everything. Like imagine like if you if you just had it set up like you put in a billing account. And then you walked away because it was like a company billing account and it was just doing stuff like charging you money for things you're not using. That's how Google works now. Amazon too. I, uh, yeah. I, I still have Amazon services set up on AWS and I don't know what they are. It's not a lot. Yeah, but, but at least Amazon services, at least Amazon services, if nobody ever uses them, then you're not getting charged for them. It depends on the service. Hmm. You see two instances there. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we used some uh, CloudFront stuff a long time ago on a site I worked on. That site no longer exists, but somehow CloudFront images still get hit on occasion. Nice. So, yeah. That uh, works, though. I had a bot set up on Amazon, and then, but I ended up taking it down because I realized that not, it wasn't even tweeting that much, but I just realized that I was just like, I didn't have, I didn't, <laughs> didn't have the investment per month to be like having this bot create these images, and I haven't found a work around yet how many servers do you do you have at the moment for like just for my servers. army of bot friends <laughs> no just i mean for you oh well i mean they're all your servers do you have like a fleet or whatever? i don't even know the answer to that zero okay. one <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a hardware person gary i mean i have my my head is in the clouds these bots yeah. just happen to me <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is what I'm talking about, right? It's AI. Um, I'm just creating an army of friends for myself for when I don't have any human contact. <laughs> what happens? So, so what happens when they start communicating with each other? That's when the fun really like, starts. <laughs> at this, at this point, well, I guess that's, there's two problems there. The first is, um, I guess it's not your problem. I mean, if they're communicating with each other and it's instant back and forth, like it's not your bandwidth. It's Twitter to Twitter bandwidth. It's internal. It's their hardware. Is there a point where the reply time becomes so fast that they just they're like binary stars that come together and form like one mass of a super bot? That'd be amazing. And they communicate no. so quickly and learn from each other that they that this is what I'm afraid of. 
So Some let's see. Communicate to one another. Oh, I'm not going to sleep tonight. So let's see. Allison's bots are the David Bowie one. Mm -hmm. What else you got? I'm just wondering, um, like, what what the combination of bots would like into a single identity would be. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think that they mesh well together. Well, the, the genre bot, bot. The David Bowie bot has some like responses built into it, so it, you can converse. So, with it. so it would be highly influenced by David Bowie. It would it would know extensive details about genres that don't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which but this sounds like a bot I want to have a drink with. To be honest, yeah. it's, so, it's, so it's, uh, it's basically like having a drink with me, though. <laughs> It's like she talks about Bowie a lot and like weird genres of music that she's yeah, she has no idea anything about. <laughs> I'm not sure that's really a genre. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, well, no, but and but it, oh man, genre nader really came in handy the other day because some wow, genre nader came them. in handy for anything. <laughs> no, no, it did. I was looking up um, I was looking up who was opening for Nick Cave on his tour. <laughs> and then I was just like, I felt so much more informed because I was just like, yeah, I'm a yeah, shoegaze. I'm familiar. Like, I know, I know a thing or two about this ambient pop that the kids are listening to these days. Dream pop. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I, um, I, yesterday I had a, a production deploy and um, our QA said, um, smoke test has done a production and they're looking good. And I replied, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I realized that, that that's like a snippet. There's like a few things, like there, that's a snippet of, of like, like the love languages of developers, right? Like that's one of those things that goes in. <laughs> QA saying production is good. Um, yeah, something you said reminded me of that. that I needed to, I'll have to listen to this episode at some point uh, <laughs> to figure out what that is. It was like around 18 minutes ago. No, now you're now making me think about because I have like several bots in the wings that I that they're kind of almost done but not really. So like I have one that's like a rock patronus that I want to like so people would send it a message and then it would combine and take data from your Twitter profile that's public and combine it to like have a rock star plus whatever your patronus animal is. Um, but so far I only got it to basically give you a picture of Bowie and a pangolin. <laughs> Sounds like a win. <laughs> Sounds like a win. <laughs> Which I feel like could be everybody's rock patronus and we'd all be very happy with that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I guess because mostly because I hadn't decided what data made sense to pull from people's profiles that was the most readily accessible um, that people share. Birthday seems to be the big one. But anyway, we should get a topic before we or otherwise we should talk about. <laughs> you know, I actually have, I actually have a topic. Um, the topic is idioglossia. Um, it is a nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> Are we to that part of the episode? Yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, we could just skip to the quiz part of the episode. Yes. Um, idioglossia. Or we don't have to. We have questions. We have Allison questions as well. We have no protocol anymore. We're off the rails. Yeah, we're totally off the rails. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I was just talking about this. Um, but I think it's if, if we can't celebrate on episode one hundred thousand, when can we celebrate and go off the rails? <laughs> Idioglossia! Woo! Oh no, uh, that's not. It was pareidolia. What's that? Was. I, I can see uh, the confusion. Pareidolia is the instinct to seek familiar forms in disordered images like clouds or constellations, the perception of random stimulus as significant. It's a type of aprophenia, seeing patterns in random data. So like if you only had conversations with bots uh, and you started getting personalities out of those bots or you started sensing that the bots had their own personality, then that would be uh, pareidolia. Um, Parad pareidolia, yeah. Well, so what, what is the idioglossia? This is a different thing. Glossia. What do you, can you spell it? Yeah, it's I D I O G L O S S I A. Drat, that's how I thought it was spelled. 
I was hoping there was going to be a gotcha in there. It's a noun. Um, yes. That's <laughs> that helpful. Uh, Ideoglossia is the sense that. Uh, <laughs> is the perception of things as glossy. <laughs> I love that. that looks glossy to me. I am experiencing idioglossia. The, the idea of that is very glossy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're you're almost there, actually. I know. I, I I do too. But it's not the the glossy thing is just bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> anytime, anytime so, I encounter a word that has idio at the beginning, I always think of. Um, uh, Monty Python quest for the, Fol for the Holy Grail when uh, he the is John Cleese is talking about his idiom. Oh. It is my idiom. <laughs> it's my idiom to charge in and fight things. It's my, it's uh, my very core. Just do it. So let's let's assume that you're on the right path. So idioglossia, if you were on the right path, is um, it's the sense that something that that things are better than they are. So like oh, a, like a refined a refined optimism. Um, over optimism, yes. <laughs> over optimism. I would I would uh, I would amend that to say the conviction that things are better than they are. That's probably right. It's not yeah. It's not optimism. It is beyond that. It's yeah. Conviction is the right word. It sounds annoying. <laughs> Quite. Oh, it sounds dangerous. <laughs> I know several idioglossia, idiogloss, idioglossians, and they're just ridiculous to be around. I feel like that I would have the propensity to fall into that trap, though. You know? No, you already you said you dropped the f bomb like eighteen minutes into this episode. You're definitely because of AI. You're definitely not going to fall into that category. I have the propensity to. Not. I clearly don't today. <laughs> Golly, I'm about to have a beer after this episode. <laughs> <sighs> and and like, the, oh, I don't want to ruin it in case you're going to watch it. X Files. That episode, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I mean, there was, oh, man, and there's this like whole, it's it's hokey. I mean, there's some hokey parts that you kind of like roll your eyes at, but it doesn't mar the the idea there putting out there it's it's do you think the new ones are worth watching i mean i loved all x files so season 10 was kind of cool because it was like seeing your old friends season 11 kind of gets the feel back i think of some of like those episodes that were just like peninsulas like the only thing that held them to the core x files ideal was um older and scully right mm -hmm. um so there were there's a couple episodes in there where it's you know it doesn't it doesn't have to revolve around this like central theme other than the X Files itself is the theme. We're not finding. I I loved the originals. I wasn't. I watched a couple episodes of the new season, the new series, and I wasn't that impressed. And Erin was not into it, but she never watched the original. That's the problem with a lot of a lot of things where like they reboot the series, and I know the series, and then Erin has never seen the series, and it's like, well, I don't get the the gold the nostalgia of watching this thing. I just get this is kind of a boring show. This is a nerdy thing to say. Yes. Um, what well, is what is when well, binary jazz? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that like I probably didn't need to preface what I'm about to say for this group with that. Um, that I I really liked on the newer episodes. Um, I, I'm not like a TV guy, but the fact that they were in HD really it felt more immersive than standard def, which is dumb, but it it really helped for me. It made helped you make the leap. The yeah, quantum I mean, leap. <laughs> Is that show any good? Quantum Leap? No, not at all. Okay. Okay. I watched it religiously for however many years it was on TV, but no, it's not good at all. Yeah. The best part about it is, um, oh, that actor that's in tons of Twin Peaks movies that was always the weird guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, <doesn't it? laughs> oh, no, he yeah. was in Blue Velvet and. Oh, he was in. Uh, he was he was Doctor What's His Bucket in uh, Dune. Um, <laughs> I have visions of him saying the tooth, the tooth. <laughs> um, so he was in it, and and he was slightly less creepy uh, than his normal parts. Um, but he's still really creepy because the whole premise of Quantum Leap is that this dude is is 
is traveling through time and space and inhabiting the body of a total stranger. Yeah. And then this guy from the future, who's his friend, uh, is going along the trip with him and no one else can see him. And so he's having this conversation with a guy who's not there, who just follows him around throughout his travels into bodies of other people. Yeah, he's like the Snuffleupagus or Pokeroo. <laughs> yes. Of time okay. travel. <laughs> yeah. It's like if the time traveler's wife, yeah, had, had Snuffleupagus. Sure, sure. <laughs> Which I would watch again. <laughs> okay, can we ask what Idioglossia is and then talk about what it is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? Already? It, we just yeah, spend I, I 20 minutes talking about, about like computers yeah, and boxing and, and everyone about artificial intelligence. Um, it's so it's a uh, idiosyncratic language. So it's spoken by only like one person or a few. Oh, because glossia means means yeah. uh, speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, a larger umbrella for something. I, like you know when twins have their own language, so that's called yes, scriptive. totally. You know, you know when twins like well, like I don't know. I maybe I just have been friends with like an abnormally amount percentage of twins in my life, but they they've almost always like grown up with like some sort of twin talk or twin speech. That yeah, only they. We need to come back to this. Continue, but I have some questions. <laughs> yeah, so that so like twin speech is cryptophasia. But the larger umbrella over it is idioglossia, which is usually just like, like the private languages. It doesn't necessarily have to be attached to twins, but it's like, and it also happens um, a lot of the time when there's like multilingual households. So like, it's like that combination of like all the languages, which kids like, they usually end up growing out of, but in that initial like first five years stage, they'll like have their own language combined from all the languages. Um, that, only like one or two of them actually understand because it's completely made up grammar wise. <laughs> so, so like, so as an example for the, for our listeners, uh, if you've ever seen the show Home Improvement, Tim Allen's series of grunts that uh, communicate some sort of uh, feeling or expression or, or, or uh, I don't know. It would be considered emotion. emotion glossy. Yeah. yeah, emotions. Yeah. Um, I need <clears throat> clarification. What is a um, a non abnormal number of twin friends? I just feel like well, the fact two. that like more than two <laughs> sets of twins. More than two twins. More than two twins. I don't think they're called twins. <laughs> In any group of twins, if there's more than two, that's weird. <laughs> 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 I think in my life I have known one set of twins, and that was in high school, and I wasn't friends with them. <laughs> By uh, out of principle, it sounds like. I'm just, no, not specifically. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like there was always a set of twins in in classes <laughs> I was in grad school. The odds are such that it's very possible. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't have any strong feelings about twins. I was just wondering if there was like a like a like a clear line, like I am friends with six sets of twins. Like that's too many. You're gonna need to get rid of four people. That's too many. If they're paired up, it would be easier because then they would still be twins, right? Right. Do you? I don't want to go down this. I have stupid questions on it. And <laughs> I don't. I mean, I it's, the phenomenon of twins is really interesting. On the same token, I, I don't know. I mean, is it is it? Well, I feel like it's like having a sibling. Ask a lot of questions about having a sibling to the nth degree because you're connected in additional ways than just as like a sibling experience. I don't know. I'm not a twin, so I'm I'm speaking from nowhere. That's a relief. I was or about to. Ask, I was like bracing myself for that. Yeah, I was totally. Gonna, I was totally going to say this is actually not Allison. This is her twin. That would be the plot twist in this whole this whole shebang. Been hidden in, in the closet. <laughs> I'm so glad we dodged that. I'm not sure I could handle it. That would be too much today. It would just, I mean, between the X Files episode and this, I. If I was going to do a reveal, though, it wouldn't be like this. I would just have like my twin <laughs> have her in the background or yeah. something, like something really casual, not even just another Allison. 
That's <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> so now is the part of the episode where, uh, well, since our listeners are uh, intently not sending questions, we're just going to make some shit up. <laughs> Which is different than the rest of the episode. It's really totally different than the rest of the episode. It's not uh, the entire premise of the show or anything. Well, we should say, if, if you listen, um, feel free to interact on Twitter or um, join our Slack or visit our website and submit questions. If you want to submit questions, that's cool. Just, you know, say hey and tell us why you listen to the entire episode. Um, that's true, because we really <laughs> legitimately would like to know. And there's no, there's no question or interaction or comment that's weird or out of place. Like, for instance, or, if you had something you wanted to say about the jar of nails, like, you should weigh in on that. Um, and to that end, um, you don't have to use a real name if you use the form online. Yes. So if it is a weird question, even though there aren't such things, but if you do want to ask a weird question, you can do it honestly. Fakie McFaker of Tin. Oh, I thought it was inquisitive and quizzy face or something. <laughs> inquisitive and quizzy face. That too. Maybe. Sounds better. So should we delve into Allison questions or Allison quiz show? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be gone for next week. So if we don't do Allison quiz show, I might, I might have withdrawal. Okay. So Can we do Allison one question first? Because I, I need a transition. I'm a little. Okay. Transition. Transition question. Uh. Would you rather have a live-in massage therapist or a live-in chef? Chef. Yeah, I'm going to go with chef. I hate cooking. I do most of the cooking. Okay. and I, 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 mean, I, I mean, not that I hate it, hate it, but I would prefer not to. So, yeah, live-in chef for sure. Okay. Although live-in makes it, like, by definition, a little weird. Well, I guess I, I just mean, like, by request at any point was the live-in portion of it. I mean, I'm down. That's fine. It's a new family dynamic. We figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. It's so open, so easy going. <laughs> okay. So it's quiz time. It's quiz time, <laughs> and I'm taking this from a, sh a podcast called Pop Culture Happy Hour. So I can't take full credit because I like the title, and then I was just like, "Oh, well, this is clearly something that we need to do." And it's called Paint or Perp. So it's either the name of a Law & Order SVU episode or a Sherwin-Williams paint color. This sounds awesome. So paint or perp? Here we go. Serendipity. Uh, paint. Uh, yeah, it's got to be a paint. Please no, go. SVU episode. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And once again, I'm not keeping score at all. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> uh, nuance. Nuance. Uh, that's a perp. Yeah, SVU episode. No, it's a paint. <laughs> wow, you're awful today. It's a grayish white. <laughs> uh, nocturne. Paint. Paint. SVU. What? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are not not crushing yeah, this we're game. Off our game. We're off <laughs> our game today. Uh, anonymous. Perp. I'll go with paint. It is a paint. Damn. Yes. A greenish dark gray. I'm glad uh, that you have the color description handy. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, anonymous would have been like, it's just white. <laughs> yeah. But it is very curious. I do love paint chip names, so it's it is very oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, like I that painted that is a topic in my house. Anonymous. <laughs> um, harvester. Uh, perp. It is a paint. It's a gold. Yes. Of course it is. <laughs> of course. Uh, pure. Pure. Spell it. P U R E. Here. Okay, I just want to make sure there was no, not a weird spelling because it was a no, weird spelling. No umlaut, no nothing fancy. Perp. Paint. SVU episode. Damn. Um, perp. Yes. Storm. Perp. How are you finding all these one word paints? It's, <laughs> it's true. Perp. 
What did I say? I mean, I feel like every paint has like a like like elephant tooth decay, or I mean, like really you know, <laughs> eccentric names. I've never heard like one word paints. Oh, I've got got nothing but on this list. <laughs> I'm impre- That's the most impressive part about this to me. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, retreat. Retreat. Uh, huh. Depends on the definition of uh, paint. The definition of uh, retreat that's being used. Um, I'm gonna say paint. Paint. Uh, correct. It's a blue gray. Yeah. Because I think that if retreat meant like to fall back from, then it would be uh, an episode perp. Oh. But but retreat as in a stay away in some other place that's presumably exotic or you know just not home. That would definitely maybe a paint somewhere blue gray apparently. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I love that you're like this is how intense the Law and Order also the <laughs> writers get or whoever na- is naming the episode. Um, inner child. Inner child. Well, you oh, God, just I, said I, I, that you only I had one word paint, paint, so that's definitely going to be a perv. It's a paint. Damn it. <laughs> you lie. I, I might have stretched the truth a little. It's a rosy beige. Not, not a uh, damsel. They took that a bit literally, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Let's call the child and see what color it is. What? <laughs> damsel is a perp. Uh, paint. Paint. It's a lavender. Oh, it's a pink. Oh, lavender. Yeah. A wanderlust. Paint. paint. Perp. Damn it. <laughs> haystack. Paint. Haystack? <laughs> Good old haystack. Which, which series of SVU is this? Any of them? What do you mean which series? It's SVU. Oh wait. Oh I'm I was thinking I'm sorry, I was thinking law and order. It is SVU. Okay, it's gotta be paint. <laughs> it's gotta be I love it. It's gotta be paint. No, perp. SVU episode. Really? I believe it's like needle in a haystack is probably what they're going for. I was thinking haystack is like a uh, derogatory term for a southern. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, all right. Uh, daredevil. Perp. Paint. Paint. It's an orange Damn red. Uh, charisma. Ah, uh, uh, paint. Paint. Trick question. It's both. Oh, fry. <laughs> It's a salmon kind of color. <laughs> so who gets the point? No one. I think we both do. No, because we, we only picked one. Chat room. Oh. Chat room? <laughs> Perp. Perp, yeah. It's oh! God damn it. It's <laughs> 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 oh, <that's> good time. <laughs> Uh, room and volumes isn't that isn't that ahead of the time? I don't know what chat rooms are. But also, oh. would you paint your your room chat room? <laughs> I'm about to paint my office chat room right now after the show. <laughs> it's kind of a green gray, like a muddled. Ew! No, I'm not going to paint it that color at all. <laughs> it's not not a good one. <laughs> um, escape. Escape. Uh, perp. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Nope, just perp, just SVU. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a point for that. You should give yourself all the points for even <laughs> entertaining this quiz show nonsense. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Uh, let's see. Sociable. Almost forgot I'm already killed by a drone. Paint. 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 It's a warm tan. Congratulations. <laughs> You've identified warm tan. <laughs> oh, don't speak like a robot. Stop it. <laughs> Carrie's uh, going to have nightmares tonight. I was going to anyway. <laughs> Just about AI. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.